Mrs. P. Thank you very much. Anybody want an agenda for the meeting? Can you hear them? <laughs> this is PJ from, with Newborns in Need in Helen, Georgia, and we're getting ready to do a class on burial gowns, making burial gowns from wedding dresses. Um, we're going to show how to take them apart and how would they make their burial gowns. They're beautiful. So, I'm just going to turn the camera around and we can watch and maybe learn something. Cool. dress, a piece of the embellishment or a piece of the fabric if it's plain, if it's ornate and you feel like you're not going to use this little section, cut that out and glue that or sew it to the note card. And there's a script in there of the little thank you to write to the person to send to them. That acknowledges that we got their gown and we are working on it. Okay. We always like you to take a picture before you cut it apart. That way your chapter will have it. And then I would, I don't know how each chapter wants to do it. Check with whoever you're with if they want you to give it back to them to send it out so they catalog it however they do it. So once that's done, then you can start ripping it apart. Then that's where the fun begins. <laughs> Everybody's really scared of that part. Right yes, that's what it's, not, it's not scary. Trust me. The first one might be hard, but after that, it's, it's pretty easy. So I have a gown that this gown is very similar to the gown that I broke apart already. So you can kind of see this one has fancy stuff here. It's got these big poofy sleeves and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot that's salvageable and a lot that's not, okay? So don't think that if you have to throw a piece of it away, because sometimes there's stains on the dresses. You can try to wash it, but sometimes it won't come out. So you're only going to salvage what you can salvage. So on this one, the first thing that you notice is the big rear end bow, okay? <laughs> it looks pretty and all, but you don't need it. Just rip it off. It's sewn on by a piece of thread. Rip it off. Guess what you can turn this into? Yes. <laughs> A fascinator. <laughs> no, there are pieces on there you can use. So in the whole pack of a burial set, there is a gown, there is a cap, there is a memory envelope. All of those pieces can have embellishments on them. It can be pieces of lace from the edge. It can be lace from the very bottom of this dress. It can be some of these beads that are on the back, the little buttons. I use them on the hat. Um, it can be as simple as here. Um, it can be as simple as saving this to put on the on the front of the memory envelope as an embellishment. So when you break the dress apart, you want to break it into the pieces that are usable. There's always usually a lining in the dress and then the fabric that's outside. This specific dress doesn't have a strip of lining in it. Sometimes if they're very, very... Um, oh, it does. does it? Oh, it does. Right it's there. Just it this does. tiny bit. This is the stuff you could use to line your dress. So every pattern, you have to cut two Z's of everything. One is your outside fabric and one is your liner. Some people like to self-line, so they like to use the same fabric from here that they're using on the inside. So then if, the, if there's a little color or a little texture difference and you press over, you're not going to see it. If there's a seam, but you want to see it. It's not as big. And the baby's trusting the baby. Okay? So you're going to try to break this into the usable pieces. So in this specific here, you hold this. That'll help. You hold that. 
So I took when I took this dress apart, I took its bow. It had another big butt bow like the other one did. Okay. I took that off. Then it's as simple as taking your scissors around the arm and cut around that seam. Then I have two arms from a dress that looked just like this one. And it had these hideous sleeves from 1980 in it. <laughs> Throw this away, you don't need it. That's trash. I have two arms that I can use to be either embellishments for further on in the project or parts of the dress. This is difficult to turn into parts of the dress unless you're just using like the lace and things. But it is usable. There's still stuff that's left on the page. You can cut down that seam and open it up and put Cut what you want. Right. Like some of them have beads on the wrist. I'll open that up and then take the beads off and use the beads. If that's all you get out of it, that's great. And this one cap. Sometimes it depends on which size. The three to six pounder, yes. The six to nine pounder, the hat's usually a little too big, but you can't get it out there. Um, some of them have things like this. This is just a little elastic thing of uh, pearls around it. That'd be perfect to use like around the neckline or around the umpire waist on the ladies' dress. Okay. Um, then comes the part of the skirt. Every dress is different. Some are separated, like you see where they have like the dress on top of the skirt, and then some are sewn together like this one. This one, you just get your scissors or your seat grouper in there and rip it apart. Then it comes into two full pieces. Here's the skirt from the dress. And then I just take the back where the zipper is and I rip down the very back so that opens it up into a long piece that you can press and use. You can probably get five gowns out of this, five burial bottoms out of this, or more if you're including a memory. And there's a train, a lot more. Like this one has a short dress, this one has a longer train. You can get as fancy when we get into the layout of our pattern, you can get as fancy as making that be the bottom of the skirt and not make it straight and let that be a really pretty pretty little, you know, cute to dress. Outside of the outside of the dress, the underside lining, I ripped that the same exact way. So now I've got two pieces of really good usable fabric. It takes about 20 minutes to rip a dress apart. You're not taking all the bottles off, okay? It can be quicker if you like to rip and go, rip and go. It's all about the fun, right? Then you're going to be left with just this bodice piece where you've taken the sleeve off, so it's like a, like equated to like a vest like Anne has on. So then, if you take your zipper out of the back, you then open up the entire piece, and this you can turn into the bodice top of the dress. You could turn it into a cap or a memory envelope. There's usable pieces. These are usually lined because this is the chest part. So it's usually got some sort of lining, maybe net on the outside and lining on the inside. You can go as far as separating this. But as you, as you do these more often, you're going to see if this is a usable piece for the bodice, I'm not going to separate the lining. It's already there. What's the point? Keep it there and sew it together and flip it around and you're done. You skipped a whole step of tracing. Okay? You can get it one fell swoop. Okay? Um, if it's something you don't think you can use or you're not willing to take a lot from here, you know, that's not your thing, then you can donate this back in and let someone else use it who likes that part or partner up with someone who you might want to do the fancy, they might want to do the plain and embellish theirs, okay? So that's really it. You end up with a skirt, a liner, the goddess piece, maybe a tail fanny or something if you want, a hat and some sleeves. And then you can start working your pattern, okay? Um, if you if you make a dress out of this fabric from this dress, take a photo of that one, and they like to have at least one go back to the person who donated it, a final finished dress, to say, here, here's what we did. You don't have to send them 12 pictures of different ones you made, just at least just one. Even if it's only the dress and a hat, even if you don't do a memory envelope. Some of you may not want to do the memory envelopes, and that's okay. Somebody else will partner up and put a memory envelope in your pouch, okay? And that's pretty much it. Questions on the dress? Oh, yeah, we'll go do that next. Everybody's going to get some to take home. Question. <laughs> on the break apart. So, question on the washing of the dress. Uh -huh. Some of them can be washed successfully yes. because I'm you working not. with what we have in storage. And some of them can't. Right. 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 If you Do you can't, have a clue as to the feel or what's the difference? Because no, you're not going to find. No, it's going to be the age. The first thing I look at when I check one out is, is the net. Like this one, didn't somebody net on the chest? Yeah. Okay, so this. 
if this has already turned really yellow, it's probably brittle. Okay. Okay, it's probably really dry and brittle. This one isn't. This one's actually in really good shape. But just kind of know, and I would test a corner like right by the zipper. If I can take this zipper and I can put like this, it's probably okay. But if it just shreds apart, it's going to it's gonna disintegrate when you wash it. I washed okay. one and it just was kind of unusable. It was pieces of one that was unusable. I was like, but what's the difference? Okay, and, and, if it's, and if it's the net, it's probably not something you want. And if you want to go as easy as, um, this one doesn't have it as well as this other one, but there are some where you'll have ornate stuff on top right here. I'll cut around that. I just just cut around the net. And that you can sew onto the cart. You can sew that on a member. You can glue it on. Cut it, trim it around as close as you can. It doesn't have to be that the whole piece is usable. It may be that I'm just going to go, oh, this one has them right there. I might go right here and cut around that. And I'm going to stick that on the memory envelope just to decorate. Historically, it's bottoms are just trashed in the price. Sometimes they are. Sometimes you can use your tie. Get a tie pen, the little tiny yeah. tie pens. Right and if you see little tiny like dirt spots along the bottom where they drug it or wine droppings or a lot of wine yeah. Yeah. yeah if that wine if that tie pen can't get it out don't bother trying to wash it it's not gonna come out okay okay so just cut around it piece your patterns around that okay great tip so so you're not wash older. better than the, I, I usually older. separate the top and the bottom and wash the skirt and if it's it's yellow, too, it's it smells really bad and, and you don't think it'll wash then mm -hmm. you throw it away and it comes out fine you, you might want but to make it's all that black yeah. yeah. Wax around the bottom of the dress because they've been dancing and the floors are dirty and they're out in the barn or whatever. Then I can cut that off. You can't use it to cut it because you've got 90% of the gaps in the dress. I felt bad after hurting that one. And, and we have like a box that we keep together of buttons and um, pearl strands and things. Like sometimes these are all attached in one strand. You just untie it and take it off. It can be used for something. We just start saving buttons in a bag, pearls in a bag, lace in a bag, whatever. So for later for use. These usually all are easy just to snip right off. A lot of times you'll see one that's turning green or black or orange just because they do. They're not that great because there's metal under there and that fabric doesn't withstand it. There's all that hair. So those sometimes you can't save all of them, but five or six, two for a hat is all it takes. And someone, she was putting some buttons on um, a little boy, a little boy one down the front. It looks really cute. So we'll give you ideas. There's lots of already done ones that you can kind of gain their through. So, oh, what can I do with this? And the more you do them, the more you're going to like the layout. Okay? So that's the dress break apart. Don't be scared. It's easy. See, so just five minutes. And I'll help you if you're here and you want a gown. There's a couple in here that you can tear apart. All these bags under this table are gowns that look like this. They've been broken apart into their pieces and they're usable to start making a dress with. So everybody has to take how many more? Three. How about take three? three. <laughs> all right. So those bands have already been broken. These have been apart. broken down. All the parts have been. All these thank you parts have been sent. So if you take from here, all you're going to start with is the next step: your pattern and sewing and finishing. Okay. Um, do you want them to send you one. pictures of those? Yeah. You're not going to. Yeah. Oh, because there's a name in each one. Every yeah. one of them has a name. The person that donated that gown to you wants a name. They go into angels at newbornandme.org. That's a website. It comes through our main website. And they just Google us and they find us and they say, I have a gown. I want to send it. So they send it to me. I'm going to take it apart. And then now I'm trying to get them out to get made. And there's always an address or an email in there. So when, the, when it's finished, you just take a picture on your phone. Yeah. It's, it's in there. It's right in each one. It shows who gave it to us. So when you make the dress, you can send, you want them to send them to you or you want them to send I them just to copy me on it. That's all in my, you got my email on there, I think. And uh, one of the bottom, one of them has my email at the bottom, Peg Elder Jack Yahoo. It's at the bottom of the uh, memory envelope, I think. And they, can they send the picture themselves? So if you send the picture, you might want to just attach a little note that, you know, hey, I'm the one who, who used your dress. Thank you so much again for your charitable donation, your wonderful giving. You know, do we put our name on you, you can if you want. If you don't prefer to, that's you perfectly fine. You, know, you can just put your first name. You can put Sandra C. You know, you don't have to put your full name. Just so that they get... 
can have Swanee Panther. You can put Swanee in. Yeah, that's all you have to chat. do. Yeah. Absolutely. Just so they know that that's what it was. If they would have gotten, if these things started here, they came from National. So they've already been done. So they've received something from her. So they're not going to connect the names together. So you just want to know this came from you know, your, your donation to National, your dress, and you know, your the final finished product, something like that. Okay? You can have the first one. I have everything that was in the closet at my house. No, thank you. She's got a thousand. She's got a thousand. You got plenty. You got plenty. You can take, take as many and, as you And want. go through and dig through them on the, sit on the floor, dig through. Find one you like. Yeah, find yeah. one you like, because that's the one you're going to want to make. Some of them are Something's going to talk to you, okay? <laughs> um, so, that's it on break yeah. apart. Um, yeah. okay. If you get a dress, let me show you this one dress so you can kind of get an idea. It's, it seems overwhelming. We say, oh, I gotta take a dress apart and I gotta take It's really not that hard. Once you do one, it's all you. And sometimes you're gonna get a dress, maybe it's a homecoming or a prom dress instead of a wedding dress, that has like this whole like piece put together in it. And it's all one piece and it's like chiffon on top of whatever. That you can lay your pattern. Yeah, you can lay your pattern on it and cut out those pieces at one time. This would have a third like overlay on top of it. Okay. But that bottom could be the liner, so you wouldn't have to do a liner like this, so you can cut out and see the beautiful cut out. And we'll do that as we start to lay these The prettiest ones are. I know. This one has a great memory envelope piece to it. It has both a strap that can go with the waistband on the dress you make, and it has pearl strands that can go on that, or it can go on the memory envelope. Little things like that, just to add to it. So don't throw those little things away. Throw the bones away, like those hard bones that are in here. Rip that stuff out and get that junk out of there. Um, this one's a little harder to deal with because it's not in big pieces, but if you just rip the entire zipper out, rip it. Uh, and you can go as far as just cutting right out. Cut it. You want to cut it, okay? Cut it out, yeah, and then just rip it into, into two pieces. You've got a huge piece of fabric to work with, okay? Somebody can take this one and take it apart if they want to. So, take it apart. So what you're seeing, what she was showing me on the shoulders, you could, you could this is glued on, but you could just put, lay it right across it. Where the, these are here, these can be glued right on to here. So it just make a nice little Straight, and it can be simple, it doesn't have to be fancy. Okay, you touched upon something a minute ago that Marsha is the better person to know what's going on is our clientele, um, a large group of our ethnicity, does not want white. Right. So right. your we have a navy prom. blue one we just yes. did. Your navy prom blues, gas. your yellows, your oranges. If you get your prom stuff, so don't have to necessarily yeah, get, stick to the if white. If you get in touch Red, with someone who might purple, have purple. like a prom gown and it's yellow, the yellow they love, like bright yellow, um, and you think that they want pink and blue, they want purple, they want yellow, they want a bright orange. They consider it a celebration of life when a mom has to go to Perfect. So there's a blue and one. And it makes them happy. It's not a sad thing for them. This is still a broken problem. Yeah, yeah, we're working on it. And it's blue and it's it's very elegant looking. And people think, oh, well, what am I going to do? Nope, it can do it. It's a burial gown. It can, it can become a really Just pretty burial some, gown. Uh, yeah, they're going to do some pearls on this one. Like that. And just simple. And it just turns out so pretty. You just glue it on there. Glue it on. Okay? Did you have blue in your you do. You have glue in your packet. Okay, so the next part is what's in my kit? What kind of fun stuff can I do with my kit? In your kit, you have a full set of patterns for a size 3 to 6 pounder and a 6 to 9 pounder. The really tiny, pruny ones that some of you have been around and you've seen me make, that's a challenge. It's very, very hard. It's very tiny. We're, National's not asking anybody to do those. If they need those, I'm supplying other people are, who've done it for a while, are supplying the time. They're frustrating to the point that you throw it down and you say, don't do this anymore. Um, so we want you to do it. We want you to do the ones you can do. So in there, you've got one piece of paper has the three to six, and one has the six to nine. I would suggest putting it onto stiffening. Trace it out, cut it out, and trace it. Use that as your master to trace with. But you can pin through this. The paper starts to pull apart, you know, and put holes in it. These are great. But what you have to remember on the pattern is every pattern in here is designed to be on the fold. Okay? So if you put the folded fabric over, you're now going to have 
when you cut around it, you're going to have this piece twice. So it's going to come around again and make the bodice to come around. Okay? When you go to do that, that one is your dress, but I still have to have another for the lining. Okay? So always remember it's two pieces and you sew them together and flip them inside out. So you'll cut two sets of this for every dress you're making. Okay? And in here is a girl's angel wing. There's my boy. A boy's, we just call it the boy's angel bodice or whatever. It's not a wing, it's just a flat, straight bodice. A cap pattern for each one of them. And it looks funny, but it, when you make it big or doubled, it's, it's a hat. And then um, you have it for the three to six, and then your skirt. Where's my other skirt? Oh, right there. So on the skirt, you have two options on the skirt. You can do the pleated skirt, okay? And it can be a single pleat, a double pleat, four pleats, a pleat in the front, pleats in the back, however you want to make it tiny and finite when you put the skirt together, and we'll go through that in a minute. Or you can do the big square, a rectangle. The, and you're going to want to write this down because I inadvertently omitted it from your sheet. Um, if you're doing the three to six pounder, and you can just write it on the pattern right here is where I would write it, so I wouldn't forget it. On that one, it's going to be a 14 by 22 piece of pattern. And this, I intentionally did this to his paint attention. Three to six pounds. Three six pounds going to be 14 by 22. And if you miss writing it down, I'll get to you later. I have a question. Are the seam allowances built into this? Yes. So when you trace, when you cut that out, you're going to want to cut right on the line as close as you can or to the inside of that line. Because then when you trace around it again, you're going to cut on that line as close to the inside of the piece of the pattern. Um, we came up with a little trick. And we bought that fun foam at Michael's, the little flexi crafty foam. And we traced our pattern onto that and cut out the foam. And we used the foam to trace all our patterns to here. And it's a little more durable. It's easier to hold on to. It doesn't slip. You can even use it for your dresses, but it's so thick it's hard to get your pins inside. This is easier to Okay? And then your six, oh, uh, three to six is 14 by 22. And then your six to nine pattern is going to be 15 and a half by 24. And honestly, if it's off an inch, it's not going to matter. Okay? Especially if you have a gown that has it really pretty edgy, make that hang over the bottom of the skirt. So if I was going to use this one, right here, and I was going to make this be the dress bottom, I'm going to lay my pattern, and I'm going to say, oh, well, that's probably where I want the bottom of the skirt to be. So don't include any hangover into your number, okay? Only because we've shortened them up enough so that they cover their feet a good length, so that their feet don't show in your skin that you show, okay? Yeah, so it would make it a little bit longer. On the bigger one? 15 and a half by 23. Question on, on the boys. Uh-huh. Are the boys what you can wear in a gown? It is a it is a flat pleated skirt. You can do a gather for a boy. I will tell you on a three to six pounder, sometimes they don't know the sex and the parents pick the sex. So don't always assume that that the gown that you say is a boy's gown, somebody might want it because that's the look they like. They like that pleat that you put in there. They so we're like not the pants. pants They're not no, pants, no, because they cannot dress them in pants in the NICU. They've asked us not to provide pants. It's so too long. It looks to like pants. When, when you do something like this, it almost looks like pants. It's just yeah, pretty or, straight. Yeah. It's when you do your pleat to the center. So I call it my little Catholic choir boy. Okay? You fold them inwards, and it looks very boyish and masculine. I love this one that she did in two-tone because it looks sailory, looks like a boy, it looks masculine. But if I had a little girl and I liked this design, I wouldn't have problems with a little girl. Julie. So okay. I'm looking, so I don't ask the question. What is my is our same quarter inch? It's a quarter inch allowance. Yeah, and it's really these fit a three to six pounder, so the NICU's gonna get it out there, the nurses will pull it out. They'll kind of know the size. So if it's off just a tiny bit, you're talking a good range of, of sizing. The thing that doesn't change, and remember to keep this in mind, the thing that doesn't really change in three to six pounds is their neck. That opening is about the same for a three-pounder as it would be for a, up to a six-pounder. When you start to get six to nine, we made it 
larger, and that is about the same size. There's a little growth spurt in the second trimester to that point where that doesn't increase anymore. They might get fat on their arms, fat on their toes, and their legs, and things like that, but those little components are not going to change. Okay, so you should be pretty okay with that. Um, and then the NICU that National gets from my stuff will all be a premium. So that will be a whole separate size on its own. But and if anybody still, starts, you can still make, you can still make those. Size size that I've I have redone this pattern and made it very asymmetrical. Everything is straight lined. Everything matches. If you fold it in half and fold it in half, it matches that. Okay, so that you're not, the biggest problem you have um, is when, grab one of the bodices that's all on a pattern that she pinned. When we used to trace all the way around the, the bodice and make the angel one go around and come back down, you've got room for air here, you've got room for air here, you've got room for air here. You can go all wonky. And then you try to put it together and then you traced it two different times. Yeah, this one. So if you traced it two different times and you used to trace all the way around this, look how many areas that you could mess this size up. Like you would, you won't match up when you go side to side, okay? Some of this won't line up exactly perfect. On this pattern, it was done in my graphic design program, it matches. Now we traced it. We might not have traced it quite straight if we were drinking a little wine that night, but no, I'm teasing. But it's pretty asymmetrical. So when you cut yours out, I would suggest, because we're doing it on the half, we're not doing it like a oh, grab this one so you can see. So this would have been the angel wing. Oh no, this is a boy. This would have been the boy, okay? Right here in full size. Right? If I fold it in half, turn it around, he now looks like this pattern. Okay? Of course, this is the smaller one. And we have squared, this used to be an oval, we've squared it off so it looks nice and neat and easier to sew. Some people don't like to sew on the curve. Some people aren't comfortable with that. Some people want to sew on the straight. So that bodice can be done. If you wanted to modify the girls one because you're not, you're, you're frustrated with the curve, it does not matter if it's a square or a curve. Just when you go to trace this, don't cut the curve. Swap your pattern out and cut out the, the rectangle one. Okay? Totally fine. I mean, there's no right or wrong. Okay? If that's what's easier for you, I want you to make these, so I want it to be easy for you. Okay? All right? Um, yeah, we're done with all this. Um, so, when you go, when you go back and cut these out and make your own little patterns, we do have some of this over there if you want to go to trace and cut and make you a mask. That's perfectly fine too. Um, we've got sharpies and all that over there. The next piece after getting your patterns cut is getting it onto some of okay, That's the next step. So you're going to want to get a spot where you can cut that dress in half, lay it out on the kitchen table, wherever you want to be. So you can start to say, what's it going to look like when I design the dress? Okay? You'll be able to say, I want that fancy little piece in the front to be right here. You can line that up, and then you've got your pattern folded so you know this is what my finished dress is going to look like, or close to that with the seam line. And then trace around that. So you can pick and choose from the fabric the dress you want to make out of. Okay. Um, as you go through each one, you're going to want to do that. The skirt the same way. If I wanted that pretty hem to be on the bottom, I would lay that skirt down, make sure I have enough of that fringy hanging off the bottom, and trace that one and cut it out. Okay. Then once you've done that, then you're going to start working your, your dress. That's where the next level of fun begins. So we've ripped it apart like an HGTV and they tear the house down. Now we get to build the house and decorate it. Okay. When you cut these out, you're going to want to get, this is the first stage, getting my pattern onto the fabric, and I cut it out. The next stage is I'm going to take the pattern off, and then I'm just going to pin it together. And when you pin these together, and it tells you in there you want it to be the right side facing, so everything is inside. So you're going to, everything is a turn. You want to flip it out inside out. So everything is to the inside. When you do a bodice, I recommend sewing the inside first, and your pattern does not have a cut on it, so you can cut where you need to cut based on your cutting out, especially with the seam. But in the very back, only one side, when you trace that pattern, are you going to cut the back flap open. So if I was tracing this one, and it's on that piece of folded fabric, which would be this one, folded in half, it would be slick. So when I have this and I cut this out of my fabric, it looks like it looks like it. 
looks like that. Okay, it's just sitting on top of it. You're going to want to take it, take the pattern off, pin them together, and then you've got the whole thing because now the fold is gone. And then all I do is do the same exact thing as I would have on my pattern. I fold it in half, and only this one side do I cut from there to there. Everybody get that? Holler if you don't, and we'll go through it. We'll go, we're yeah. we're going to help you. We're going to come around to you today and as you want, if you want to start one. Do one. And all of these we'll, we'll, stage pieces for you to kind of inspect, and we're going to leave right there because we look at them. And I may move them back here once they start piling more stuff that's finished them on there, okay? So once you've got it cut open, it's as simple as sewing inside and outside. Always remember the bodice and the skirt are always going to go to the attachment phase where you're going to put them together. Okay? You're going to sew in the inside and then you're going to sew the outside. And you're not going to sew the tops and the bottoms on the girls or the boys. This part's left open and this part's left open. And you just flip it inside out. Okay? So I'll show you that one. So the cut, if I read this, I need to add that we're cutting. Uh, cutting yes, right because out. we originally had done the pattern this way, right, with the cut line, and we said that's just becoming too much of mess ups and cuts and purrs being wrong. So, so we so around, okay. so pin, pin, body, pin it and, and then just snip, snip that bodice part. So if you want to write on your pattern that to do that on only one edge, okay. And I've tried to keep them consistent so they all fold the same way, so that you're always cutting the slip the same way. This one has now been sewn all the way around. So the bottom of this piece is open. And the bottom of this piece is open. Okay? Right here. So I can get my fingers in here and just spin this around. When you sew it, I encourage you to use the clips and understand how to cut the clips on the work. That is what messes people up and they don't like it because they don't know how to cut the clips. You go all the way around where you stitched on the inside and you cut these little tiny notches. It doesn't have to go all the way to the edge, but they're just little tiny notches all along the curve. And when you flip it inside out, it allows you to press it flat. Okay? I'm a little OCD, so I do the inside first and I press it all down and make it pretty and then I put it back together and put it to the outside and sew it because I want it to lay flat and I'm not the greatest sewer in the world. So, then all you're going to do is when you turn it all together, it just flips right side back out. And if you have a turner or a chopstick, that usually is really good to help you flip it inside out. Yeah, you know, Chinese see? chopstick. The Chinese great. chopsticks are good. Okay. Um, um, just like on a memory, a snake wheel. And even if you aren't the greatest circle sewer in the world, those clips that you put on the corners and side, it totally goes flat, whether I sewed it right or not. It just helps to lay it nice and flat inside there, okay? And then this is the actual finished one. All nice and pretty and pressed. There's the hole at the bottom that's going to go. That's going to attach to the top of the skirt right here, okay? And then the back side is the back panels, okay? And then this is going to attach to the two back panel pieces on the back of the dress, okay? And these are open as well. There's no need to sew them closed unless you are just that person that wants to sew them closed. It's totally fine. It's a step you don't have to do. It does finish the edges. If you have a serger and you're a good serging person, then I would serge the edges. And then it would be nice and pretty and finish the black when you're putting it together. Um, sometimes these fabrics fray really badly because satin is a hell of a bad. Um, taffeta stays together a little better. Crepe will roll on you a little. Some of the crepe you have to actually um, put stitch with or something on it to kind of make it stiffer. Um, a hem tape or something just to hold it together. Okay? And then we so that's your bodice. Questions on this part? It's the same for the boy and the girl. Is that the same scenario? Instead of a, a weave, he has to square it off on okay. Same thing with the next piece of the dress. Next is the skirt. Same exact scenario. Pinned it down, and traced a piece of fabric, and we traced a piece of lining. Okay, there's two pieces of fabric. Cut it apart. With this one, if you cut it on the whole, that's what your skirt's going to look like in your pack. It's the half. Okay? This is the pleated skirt. I did not mark pleats on your pattern because you're going to pleat it wherever it fits. Whatever you feel comfortable pleating. You might want to do double pleats. You might, you might want to get fancy and pleat the whole thing across. Whatever you want to do. There's enough fabric room left in there to kind of do different stuff. Okay, and get so you can also do a, 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 a 
a gather as well. It doesn't you have can to be do a, a gather. gather. That's the okay. gathered size that I yeah, gave you. I sure. You can gather it on a book. The boys ones, we, I don't know. I don't think it really matters if it's a gathered on a boy. It's just a lot of fabric, so a mom probably nine times out of ten wouldn't pick that for a boy. She would want that for a little girl more than likely. But sometimes I say, hey, seriously, you don't know. It just depends on the stage the baby was in, and sometimes they say it's a, you know, this baby's, you know, in his first trimester, or it's past the first trimester, and it really wasn't. So you just never know what you're going to be So this one is the one that's on the pleated. If you're doing the other one, it's going to be totally squared off, the gathered one. Okay? And then you know how to do that. You just go, uh, uh, that's okay. you know, three, three steps. You know, big stitches and just pull, pull, pull the gas. However you want to do it. Some people like the elastic in it. I would suggest no elastic, okay? That's difficult and binding for the uh, for the uh, baby skin and stuff. When you touch it, it's hard to hide. So once you do this, the same scenario of the bodice. I cut it out, got it ready. I pinned my, my front and back sides together, facing inward. Okay, everything to the inside. And then you're going to sew on the sides of the bottom and keep the top open. So the open top is the part that attaches to the open bottom. Okay? <laughs> mm -hmm. Then once you've sewn it all the way that's the sun. Once you've sewn it all the way around, okay, this whole piece right here is open. Just like a little pillowcase. Okay? And then you're just going to turn it inside out and press it all flat and pretty. And this is the top piece that goes to this part, to the box. So now I've got it all done and I've pressed it all pretty. Some people like to put, and, and this is just the concept of the dress in the pleated version. It goes together and it, it does stay open just a tiny bit. So if you want to press yours flat with this little line, feel free to do so. If you don't want to, you don't have to. I like it because I feel it's easier to work with and I'm messing with it, but I'm a little over the top on that. So that's what the skirt would look like against a dress with no seats, no nothing. And if you look at this, it doesn't, it doesn't match up. It doesn't match up exactly right. I have a gap on each side. If you add more fabric on the skirt, that's going to force your pleat, whether the pleat's going to go to the center or in two sides. And you'll see what I mean over there when you look at it. So once I attach it, I force the pleat how I want it to be. Okay. And then on the back side, this is where this part attaches. And that makes the dress. Same thing. This, we force this. So what I do is I put my pin, and we'll go over this in detail later when we're sitting together. But I pin it here, and then I pin it there, and then I would press it. So sometimes you don't want to press this because now it doesn't match up. So it's all up to you. But I like to sometimes, if I'm doing a girl, I'll put a tiny little pleat tucker right there. And then that matches up to my back of my arm, okay, on the back side of the shoulder, okay? Once you've gotten those done, you've got your bodice part together and your skirt together, the next row. It's all in your finishing, how you finish it, yeah. So we've got some that we like, to, we'll show you, we like to put a ribbon across it or bias tape. It's all in what you're comfortable doing. So now I have my skirt bottom done. And I have my bodice done, and I'm going to start working on pinning them together, okay? I always work from the outside in, and I pin to the sides, and then pin over. If I wanted to put a pleat in here, I would have put a pleat there and moved that pin over a little, okay? So you work it, and you don't really have to. So then you pinned it together, and you always pin it, you know, just like we've done everything else. The outside to the outside of the bodice here so that when you sew it, everything flips around inside and it's here inside the dress. Here's okay. Okay, got that? And this one, I made two little pleats in the front. You can easily unpin it, make the pleat go this way, or push your pleats to the center and fold it inward and make inward your outward one. Okay? So there's your outward one. It looks like we missed a spot. Oh, yeah, it's okay. I we'll fix it. it. Yeah. 
So okay. there's with an inside and an outside. Yeah. And that's you okay. can surge. Some people don't have surgery. Yeah, but I, yeah. I mean, there's no reason not to. Yeah. No. And if this you, is if great. You, if you can, great. It just finishes it off a little bit better. I'll make them my notes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. And here's one that we sewn the backs together. We did all the stuff and everything sewn inside. There's nothing. It's just open. So how's it going to stay on the baby? That's the next step. You gotta attach strings to it. I am not putting in the pattern where you have to put your strings. If you want to put, normally the string is right here, just one. You can put a string here if you want to. Don't put a button that actually has to button. The nurses, they're, they're not going to mess with the baby's neck that much, and, and that touches skin and all that kind of stuff. Just a tie. If you want to put a little one here, a little one here, and another one here, by all means. This skirt is just a longer skirt from the old pattern and we shrank them all up. So this one's just extra long. The other thing you might want to do is embellish it um, and do other things with it. They. How long do they want the ribbons on the back today? You want at least 12 inches on each side. Right? Yeah, 12 yeah, on each side. 12, yeah. This is an actual, just a satin ribbon. And we just normally take it and sew it to the seam. And then you have your strings hanging down on each side. You've done it. You don't have to do anything else. It sits at the midline of the waist where it needs to be. Okay? <laughs> Some people want to sew it fancy and pretty. and do, That's fine. However you want to embellish it. The simplest way would be a strip of the satin. And then you have little strings on each side. All one top. piece. All one piece and it's done. Okay? Mm -hmm. You want to do it by hand, you can. Some people want to do it by sewing machine. You could do it that way too. It. Okay? Mm -hmm. Um, oh, and then you can have two ends of the Right, all one strip. And it's the tie right there. The old way with the dresses that you've seen us do in the past is we'd attach a string here, so leave the loop, and attach a string, and it was the way for the mom to be able to cut the string when the mom got, when they dressed the baby, and they let the, the nurses will let the mom cut. You can do that, you don't have to. It's not that, it's not that ritualistic anymore. It's just not. It, it's just not what... You're going to have a nurse that doesn't understand what that means. She goes, why is it so tall? You know, so it, they're not seeing it, so that's not a big deal. And then once you've done that part, then you're ready to, you can leave it. This is beautiful as is if you don't want to put anything on it. You don't have to. If you want to, you can decorate it, put brick rack, ribbons, rhinestones, whatever you want to put on there, and then you're ready. I always try to match the hat to the bodice. In some way, shape, or form, the ribbon is the same color. The flowers I use are the same color. Um, in this one, this is a preemie, which I'm not asking y'all to do these tiny, tiny ones. This one just has a simple edging around it. Okay. I finished mine off so that I didn't have to put a binding on there. But I'll go back and put ribbon on this one anyways, but I just want it to be able to be usable for this class. So on this hat, I did the same thing. I put the same exact stuff on here. Just around the brim, and you don't have to do that. You could cut one little flower and put it there with glue. Perfectly simple. I did not sew this. If you feel this, it is not sewn. It's glued on. It's not touching the baby. It doesn't matter. If the more stitching you do on this, the more chances you have of messing it up, making yourself frustrated because you can't get it to go straight or whatever. Easiest path to the end, glue, and it'll go. Hot glue doesn't always stay on some of these fabrics, but the glue we gave you is just like a fabric glue. It's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. Okay? I, I missed talking about the hem. About the what? On the hem. On this part? self hemming. What do you mean on this part? You turn yeah, it inside out. It self hems because you do right sides together. Right. And turn it. When you Thank when you, you sewed it back Thank here, you. I, yep. I'm, that's okay. When you flip it inside, it's like an, it's like a pillowcase. Think of it like a pillowcase. Beautiful. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Questions on the dress? <laughs> it's a lot to take in until you sit down to do it, but we're here. You've so got me. top You've stitching got not necessary on bodices and you sleeves. Don't, I like to go around my hat sometimes and put a top stitch all the way around it. Just to, you don't have to. It's all in what could, but you not necessary. Could, but it's not necessary. Um, I used to go so far as top stitching all the way around the neck. Oh heck no! I stopped that a long time ago.
<laughs> I just make a new one if well, I messed that's it up where that you, bad. That's where things get funny. Oh, I didn't do it quite right. It's a little bit here. If you better. just eliminate it, then you don't have to worry right. about it. Less stress. Let's right. put it that way. Less stress. And a press, press, press. That's the thing. You know, you every time pressing. I turn it, you can see as you look at what we've done, everything's been pressed to the mines after, before we put it together. You put a pressing cloth on it? Or you it just no. depends on the fabric, but on this no. one, these I did not. Most of these yeah. are really... A lot of the dresses nowadays that we're getting in, the newer dresses that we're getting in, I'm still getting 1980s, but, you know, it's okay. Um, the fabrics are really durable. You know, they're withstandable to those high steamings, too, but I, I think pressing it makes it nice and flat and pretty. Okay. I always start um, off on the inside pressing, if you can. Go to the inside. Yeah. Because it's all lined, so you can do a lot of yeah. pressing. Um, Peg's here. I'm here. Sue is right there. Brittany has started doing the gowns. She can even help you if you need that question. She's still learning. So when it comes to the attach the bodice to the skirt, you might not want to ask that. <laughs> that's, that's the most difficult part. Okay? Questions? Thank you. I want you guys to go through there. And the hat. Have we done the hat. Yeah, we did. Oh, yeah? Okay. That was the first thing we did. All right, now we got a memory envelope. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's the last piece. Oh, so yeah, if you're, that's the easiest piece. That's all her. Except I'm going to put, yeah, except to sew. I'm going to move this over there, and that way y'all still have them staged so you can look at them, so she can do the memory envelope. This is pretty quick, the memory envelope, and you have instructions on how to do this. You have paper in this memory envelope, I've got my email on it, and so you can email if you have any questions. So your instructions say cut a piece of fabric, a lining, and a... In an interfacing. They're standard. It's like this interfacing is 20 inches wide, so we make them these to be 20 inches wide. 20 by 14. So when you get the interfacing, it's already 20 by 14 inches. Wide. And you have a sample of some in there. It's kind of lightweight. Okay, and then um, so you've got three pieces. You've got the outside, the interfacing, and the lining. So it'll tell you on here. Right sides together, you're going to put the lining and to the, to the fa fashion fabric, that means the wedding gown fabric, and include the interfacing underneath. So you're just going to sew it all the way around, like this, and you're going to leave a piece open right here to turn. Everything's all finished off when you get it turned. And this, you're going to, just, I think it says six inches, did it say six inches? I don't know. Uh, three eight, either a quarter or three eighths, and leave a four inch opening. And you're going to click the corner so when you turn. So you're going to turn the whole thing, and here, here it's open, here it's turned, and you've got this opening. Now I gave you a little piece of stitch witchery in there. So you're going to slip the stitch witchery in, and you're going to press it because everybody hates to hand sew. <laughs> So this is a great way because you're gonna you're gonna stitch it again is what's gonna happen. So then you're gonna press it, and I think it gives you the instructions of how many inches up, four inches. Um, let's see, uh, fold one up six inches, and then there. So this will be your six inches here, and then you're gonna stitch all the way up and around here, here, and here, and you're done. That's it. That's the outside stitching. One one fell swoop, just like that. Then this will fold over, so your hat, your stitching will show right here. So there it is. This is the time that you're going to do your embellishment. You could either glue on there, you could sew some lace, whatever you want to do. That is so simple. I think from where we used to make them before. But it's just you do as little sewing as possible. Here's one that um, just came off the gown. And you can either sew it on there or glue it on there. So there's your completed. So that, is that glued on? This is glued on with that glue that we gave you. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to Or sewed. Yeah. It might be sewn. Yes. No, no it's, it's not sewn. Sometimes I sew. Sometimes I glue. Yeah. This yeah. depends on the fabric. <clears throat> like this one's sewn on here. Oh, She's okay. that one on. That is the memory envelope. That is that. Now, I, we have a little card that's in there. I think it says newborns in need, and uh, I don't remember what that one says. Do you have to put a faster on them or just You don't have to. It used to be, oh, I hate it when you 
yeah. It was so was difficult to do that. Yeah. It was the hardest part was trying to get a, a button on there or a snap or we would tie the ribbon around if we wanted to. You don't really need to because it's pretty flat. It's pretty, you know, they're going to put it in a drawer. They're going to put it away. It's not something that you're going to open and have to close all the time. And they, they, we put a card in there. Well, we put like a, um, a bracelet. Oh, we, I made those. It's Angels. It's got, it's got our email address for Angels at New Orleans and Me. So it's the national site to donate a gown. So they can go through that if they want to put you on it. I like to slide it in here. So when it goes out to people, there's just another newborn's name in there and another site for you to look at. So we don't... Uh, but these are all going to be packaged up and sent back to National. There are, are they no, no, they're going to be local in your area. Your, so your, 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 your area, Swanee, your Swanee, yeah. Sugar Hill. Or Sugar, Sugar Hill, 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 whatever Sugar Hill. it is. Yeah. So Sugar Hill has these, and then Marshall will pack those up to the hospitals. We all add other things. We do. We yeah. spent we sent out 35 in November. So you're yeah. just going to turn it in like you normally just do, like normal. just like you yeah, normally right, do. Right. Right. But the thing about it is, every chapter, the hospitals require the chapters to have different things. We're starting. You know, we're going to try to get out to some of the areas that are high. I want to say the pregnancy, uh, the loss rate is the highest in certain areas of the country. So we're going to try to start reaching out. National will take care of that. So we we supply the national. But your chapters, you can do that if you have too many. You know, just contact Connie and she'll get them out. So we have lots of resources. So your hospital's going to dictate one thing. Another hospital's going to dictate another thing. They don't want the memory albums. They just want a, a gown and a hat and a blanket. You know, everybody's different. So you're going to serve your local hospitals. So you've got sample of everything. I you've got love instructions. your things that you do with the teddy bears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get them all. Huh? I said that. The good thing about newborns in need is that We're we pro they provide guidelines and allow creativity. That's right. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of creativity in this one. I tell you, right. you don't you, you have your guidelines mm -hmm. of what is and isn't, but mm -hmm. nobody's going to yell at you if you step off the guidelines. Because yeah. I have, it's not I wanted yet. to learn how to do this. I have two other patterns that I use yeah. as well, and I've been told that I can still do those if I want. Oh, yeah. But some of the fab simple, the fabric yeah. dictates what right. you do. That's right. That's right. So then they'll. Go back. You pointing at me? No. Oh. No. Oh. I I said, when she when she turns this off, I have a question. Oh. I She's thought you me. were you were going to me and saying, no. Sandra, no the witch. No. <laughs> I had something to say to you. Say it right now. Right. You, you got, got it, girl. Girl. Okay, that was long but very informative on how to take a wedding gown apart and how to make burial gowns for little girls or little boys. I hope you enjoyed it and get a lot of use out of it. Feel free to share this with whoever you think would be beneficial if somebody's looking to um, donate their wedding gown. Um, you heard the website is called angels at newbornsinneed.org. You can tell them how to do that. Um, if somebody is looking to make, uh, to take their own gown apart and make memory envelopes and burial gowns, uh, they'll show you how to do that. So, off we go and we'll see you again another time.